There are so many creepypastas out there about haunted video games and brings things out of that nature. I've always read them and always pa just pass them off as just add fake stupid creepypasta stories. Although they were very entertaining, I never expected something similar to happen to me. It seems like the worst things have always tend to happen to those most unsuspecting and cynical, doesn't it? Well, I was at the time of my disappointment in life that I had become very ill and forced to drop out of college. I hated to having to leave my own dreams and put them on hold and have been suffering from a mild case of depression because of it. But there was still a comfort that can come um, and only from being back home that reassured me a bit. But there was still the boredom that I had to deal with. No job, no college, and I hate to say this, but little friends. Most still in college themselves made each day drag by. The day spent watching TV and old VHS movies that familiar living room I gave me some inspiration to find my way to ease the ever increasing stedium. Now my VHS and DVD library had dwindled down to my old worn out Disney movies left unwatched. So I decided to want to watch one of my old time favorites was The Lion King. The colorful kit lion cubs reminded me of an almost forgotten piece of my past. It was the old 1994 Lion King PC game I used to play constantly as a child. My mom and I used to spend hours trying to beat that old game. The flood of old memories sent me back to my old bedroom to the ancient computer that still sat on the desk of the corner. I had been so proud of that old computer when I first bought it. At the age of 11, I just saved up enough of my allowance to buy it myself. It was a heartwarming and to see the old startup screen to hear the old jingle of Windows XP started up. The bulky old compact person scenario groaned out to life and I clicked on the start button to search for my old games. Sadly the game folder was barren and emptied. Disappointed, I walked in to ask my mom about what happened to our old games. She looked a little sad probably seeing the dissatisfaction in my eyes. She told me since I had purchased my brand new laptop a month or so ago, my dad was going to sell the old computer. He had taken all the old games and documents and removed them. Then she suggest suggested that I ask my dad if he saved any of them. Later that night, my dad returned from his job at the factory, tired and worn, and he flopped onto the couch to do what he wanted to do was relax. Look up the stuff on his laptop, so I walked over and asked him on what the fate of my old childhood memories had been. He regretted to say that he didn't think I would care about them anymore, and he had to delete them. I was clearly saddened by that. I had really been looking forward to skydiving into the ocean of nostalgia. Hated to see this little girl, all of 19 years of her, upset. He said that he'd go online and try to download as many of the old games as he could find from freeware sites and things of that nature. Gladly, my dad did find a download of the 1994 Lion King Sega game, my old favorite. Now this game isn't like the modern Disney games out there. It wasn't babyish activity center or storybook game. It was the story, yes, but it was an action game. The gayest of all, is when you started off as playing as young Simba and he defeats innocent villains and animals such as chameleons, porcupines, frogs, spiders, vultures, and even the harder villains like the hyenas. S young Simba could defeat these adversaries by simply jumping on them except for the porcupines which you had to growl to flip them over and then jump on them. Older Simba was oddly more violent. He could slash, maul, and flip his enemies, some of them even throwing small amounts of blood flying from them for each hit. Nothing gory, but you could never see any injuries of his enemies. But at the age of four, that seemed like a major carnage. Now, the next morning I was glad to have the whole house to myself to play the game again. My dad was at work and my mom was off to Lexington, Kentucky to help my almost 80 year old grandma. It was times like this where it just pays to have no siblings. So I grabbed a bowl of M&M's and some sweet tea and retreated to my room for the day. My dad had installed the game into the bulky old gray black and white computer from the night before, but I hadn't seen it, if it worked or not. 
I prayed as I did and clicked on the file, and it worked to my delight. And when I saw the grainy startup screen, it was a picture of Pride Rock, with Rafiki holding up baby Simba. I pressed enter to start the game, and Timon appeared on the screen and said on the old familiar words, It starts. I worked my way through the colorful levels with ease. I remember every trick and bonus. Everything went well and I was having a good old-fashioned fun like I used to as a little kid. I made it to the last level of Pride Rock where adult Simba battles Scar. I made it halfway through the level, battling Scar two of the three times, killing off the hyena after hyena. After I was having a perfect game until I made one mistake. I misjudged a jump and missed the platform I was aiming for, sending Simba to plunge into the darkness in between. That's when things started to go wrong. Instead of just fading to black and starting the level over like it was supposed to, the screen began flashing random colors, mainly red, black, and purple. And that sound isn't supposed to happen in the game. I should know. I've played it hundreds of times and memorized every part of it. The sound was from the movie. It was from the infamous stampede scene when Mufasa fell to his death. It was Simba screaming no, but then there was a screeching sound so loud that I had to jump to turn down my speakers. I figured that it was just a hack version of the game and someone thought it would be funny to make a game and add sound clips from the movie. But instead returning to the level I was on, the game restarted from the beginning. That made me annoyed since I'd gotten so far. But then the startup screen had changed. Instead of the cheery scene I remember from my childhood, or from two seconds ago for that matter, it was dark, blurry, and odd colored. Red, black, and blue. It almost looked like the night shot of the original screen, so I thought that it must be just a glitch and press start anyway. Instead of Timon saying his normal phrase where there's a strip of red, writing down what seemed to be flesh, a flash and twisted on the screen, it said that quote I recognized I actually loved. The boundaries which divided life from death are at the best shadowy vague for those who shall not say the one that ends and the other begins. A quote from my favorite author, Edgar Allan Poe. I was actually a little happy to see my favorite quote, but couldn't help but feel a little uneasy. Why was it on a Disney game? And I knew for sure it didn't belong here, but I played it anyway. The first level was all wrong. First off, I had no lives and left and when I should have eight, and the sky was pitch black. The first level was usually a cheery and sunny level. Worst of all, young cub Simba was lying down in an unnatural crumpled position. He was bloody and shaky. And this wasn't the Disney norm at all for the heck of it. I tried to move him the arrow keys and he reached out his arms slowly and dragged himself on the ground leaving a trail of crimson red blood behind him like a slug leaves a trail of slime. The progression was slow but crisp and autumn weather outside made me excited for Halloween. So I decided to try and see if I could play this disturbed version of my favorite game. When I needed to jump, the half-dead lion cub jumped almost normal, except each jump he lost a body part. The bloody part of him fell into the crevice that he was jumping, each jump made our crumbled hero bloodier and bloodier. And at the end of the level, the hyena was different too. His eyes glowed red and he looked as if he was slashed a couple times. I defeated him with two jumps, just in time as Simba's last leg fell off. I wonder what waited for me on the next level, and the first one faded to black. The I can't just wait, can't wait to be king level was upside down and it seemed to be melting on the screen as well as being darker colored than it should. Simba was back to the original state he was on first disturbed level. He dragged the lawn and made his way into the rhino. He jumped onto the rhino's head and his tail failed of falling off along the way. The rhino flipped him and into the trees into the arms of the monkeys. This is the part when Simba was supposed to jump on the heads of the giraffes over the water to the other side. But there was one problem. The giraffes were beheaded, bloodied, and even with amazingly disgusting detail. I could see the bones sticking out, and I thought, whoever hacked this game even then had more of a dark side than me. But I wondered on how the battered Simba could get across the water. 
which in this version of Red Blood. But the jump on the giraffe and the giraffe clinging onto the next, the blood made him slip off quickly. So I had to jump quicker and quicker to keep from falling in the water. Later in the level, the ostrich is supposed to be ride was beheaded and skinned with a frightening realism. It looked more like a photo that I have seen taken at fur arm, our farms of dead animals. The ostrich lurked was an odd, distorted way as it ran. The rest of the level was about the same. The monkeys were beheaded and the trees on fire and Simba crawled through the upside down madness. That level faded the screening and then the sound returned as it somewhat completely. As expected, it was Mufasa's face. But instead of the gold color that he should be, he was black, and his eyes were glowed green. He opened his mouth and said a hissing voice, Scar is innocent. It was me. What did that even mean? Was this twisted game trying to pass off that Mufasa was supposed to let go of the cliff on purpose? I don't even know why. I was disturbed by that thought. But of course, don't be stupid, I thought. Don't be stupid and let the game make you upset about a fictional cartoon lions. Despite the nervousness I was experiencing, I continued for the elephant graveyard level. This one was right side up, thank goodness. And Simba was surprisingly normal, standing up straight like he's supposed to. And maybe the hacker got bored and decided to leave this level alone. My thoughts were proven wrong as soon as I fought of them. The elephant graveyard was strangely devoid of life. No hyenas came to attack me like they were supposed to. Just the thought of it was an easy level and began to run through the game. As I moved, I realized it wasn't going to be that easy. I scream ripped loudly through the speakers and through my monitor, not just the screen, but the whole monitor shook. It freaked me out and I figured that it was probably just vibrating from the loudness of the screams. Anyway, I had a new thing to worry about. Ground was literally crumbling under Simba's feet and I had to keep running through the desolated graveyard to keep him from falling to unknown black below me. As I ran, I noticed that the spots that were supposed to have on the hyenas instead had bloody skinned corpses instead. And the same hissing same voice of Mufasa I heard before as a passage one. Death is cruel to the just and the unjust, he repeated over and over as the scream built up louder and louder behind it. Then the whole monitor starts shaking again, more and more violently. Then very realistically, blood started dripping down my screen. So realistic, I was attempt to reach out and touch it. I indulged in my temptation and was petrified as my finger became covered in sticky crimson blood. As to be expected, I screamed and ran from the room. I ran into the bathroom and slammed the door shut. My hands were trembling as I reached for the light switch. I half expected a distorted Mufasa face to be right in front of me as soon as I flipped on the lights. Of course it wasn't. So I sat down and curled into a ball. Suddenly I hated being alone. I yearned for my parents to come home. It didn't help as I could still hear that scream from the other room. My room where I had to sleep. As frightened as I was, I decided I had to go back and turn off that game. I mustered up of what uh, courage I had left in me and would slowly walk back into the room. I almost afraid to turn and look at my computer at the dark corner of the room, but when I did, I saw the blood was gone. Maybe I just let the disturbing game get to my head. And I hallucinated the blood, I mean, it's just a game, right? Weirder still as the game had paused it on its own, as if it had known to do that. It had fled the room, maybe in my panic. I had hit the other button and the enter button on the keyboard and it just hadn't known to it, but I sure didn't remember it. The thought of it was proved to be false as soon as the bottom made contact with my seat. And as for as soon as I sat down and the game started up, the screaming thankfully stopped for the time being curiosity was urging me to keep going. I knew my dad would take the way the defective game off as soon as he heard heard about it. This was my only chance to see what really happened. So I kept going. I finished the crumbling elephant graveyard level, prepared for the stampede level, and whatever dark twist was next. 
But to my surprise, everything was normal in the level. The sky was blue and the rocky cannon was a bright tan. Just as I remember it. Half of me was thankful, and the other half was the darker half I hide from most people. I was bored. At the end of the, the level it was when things change. After Simba escaped from the wildebeest, the screen cut to a L M L G banter to black abruptly, and then continued to play a scene from the movie. Well, sort of. The scene where Mufasa was climbing up the rocks after saving Simba from the stampede. But then something was different after that. It cuts to Simba, staring at his dad, struggling to climb up the cannon. This scene wasn't in the movie, thought it was just animated, just as good in good quality, as the real movie. Simba was crying as if he knew his dad wasn't going to make it. Sobbing hysterically, then he stopped suddenly and turned his face to the screen. His eyes were empty and emotionless, and as soon as he stared at me, Venny stood up and walked forward. The camera angle switched to behind him and revealed of what he was walking into, the ledge. The cliff? What is this? I could only watch in horror just as he walked off the cliff to the stampede below. Then the screen cuts to Mufasa's face. When he saw it, he saw Simba fall to his death. His eyes were filled with tears and looked up at his brother's scar. Scar was grinning down at him. What are you going to do now, brother? Scar asked menacingly. His eyes were glowing odd red and paws dripping with blood. What do you have to live for? Nothing, Mufasa answered. Then he turned to the screen. No one does. Then he let go of the cliff and fell, and then it showed Scar laughing, his face slowly morphing into a hideous skull, pieces of flesh clinging to it, and his eyes started to drip blood as the screen faded to black around the skull. Then he whispered, It's true for you too, Heather. Then it chuckled and disappeared. Once again, I found myself running from the room, and this time with hysterics. If I thought that I was trembling before, then this was my own personal earthquake. In the bathroom, I ended up vomiting in the toilet. Then just I sat there whispering, It's not real. It's not real. I, tears ran down my face like blood that I had from scars. How did that game say my name? This is not normal. It's not right. I was the adult in this house at the time. It was time for me to go back into that room and turn that demonic game off immediately. I stopped into my bedroom angrily. I will not let a game, a game, control of me. I glared down towards the screen and noticed that Scar was gone and I was sitting there on Simba's exile level. Very normal looking and it didn't had looked an appropriate sound for the game. Once again, curiosity got the better of me and I was dismissed of the movie clip as my imagination was getting the better of me. So I continued to play the level. I was stupid, I know of that now. But I wasn't able to get freaked out over for that easily over things like that. I was a type who craves scary things and I loved them. So I played the game with cautious but the curious attitude. I was just waiting there for someone else strange to happen. Not hoping it like before. More like watching a video online and waiting for a screamer. The level was perfectly normal. Whoever hacked this game had a twist sense of humor, I fought warily, luring you into a false sense of security when freaking out when it's the whole new way. I knew it was coming. I still jumped when it happened. Simba's exile level ended normally as the hyenas watched Simba escape through the forest yelling, If you ever come back, we'll kill ya! But that didn't happen. Something freaky happened. The Kuna Matata level started, but Simba couldn't move. It was like the game was locked up except that he was moving. Not running like I wanted him to, but shaking his head over and over and over again. As if he was trying to shake the bad thoughts from his head. Then suddenly, the stroke, the straight, he looked straight ahead and it fell to the ground. Like he passed out and only his eyes rolled out of his head and across the green, green jungle grass. The, then the image of a twisted on itself and faded to black. Then abruptly, it switched directly to the next level, skipping Akuna Matata immediately. It would only seem fitting for a dark game to skip the happiest level. So now Simba is an adult, and this level was representing of him going to a night to see Rafiki. As the old adult, 
as he had new powers such as slashing and mauling. I mentioned before brief, mild violence, but normally that was in adult Simba levels were. Well, this was much, much worse. When Simba mauled a leopard, the leopard was ripped into pieces and the body was left in a bloody mess. In pieces piled on top of each other, each one being killed off as murdered in the same merciless, violent way. I should have known something like this was coming. Then at the end, when he found Rafiki at the pool of water, Mufasa appeared in the sky and Simba started shaking, not randomly, but in a pattern. And sobbed it sounded when to beat the snakes. But of course, Mufen Mufasa reached down and opened his mouth wide and Simba just walked in and disappeared. Rafiki then looked at the screen and whispered, The circle of life is a lie. All die, all perish. Your time is drawing nearer. At least he didn't say my name again. That was a relief. The game skipped to whole new levels, and I found myself at the start of the last level, Pride Rock. It seemed normal until I moved Simba forward. As if immediately finding Scar like he was supposed to, he just ran through an empty level. No hyenas, no fire, no Scar. It was like until I got to the very top of Pride Rock, where Simba and Scar were supposed to have their final battle. I was shocked at who was weighing at the top. Mufasa? He didn't even have a character in the game. I wondered for a second if I was supposed to fight him, since he was Simba's father after all, but Mufasa left on the Simba and began to maul him violently, ripping off Simba's right foreleg and he flung the leg off, off of Pride Rock. I moved Simba as he hoppled over to his dad and jumped, mauling him as well. The battle was proven to be e pretty even, Mufasa and Simba ripping piece after piece off of each other, for about 10 minutes of fighting, I lost control of them. Nothing if I did affected the fight. They were fighting on their own. Suddenly Simba jumped onto his father, causing the both to do a somersault off the ledge of Pride Rock and into their doom. The screen then flashed several times, and the screen returned, and the screen was switched to a very realistic picture of, of Mufasa and Simba's mangled bodies lying in a leap under Pride Rock. Then the screen twisted on itself again, and Scar's skull appeared right in front of the picture. I screamed when the skull spoke. Hever, Satan lives in the depths of each good soul. You can't escape him. You can't fight him. Give up before he tears you apart. Then the screen flashed and it showed a new picture. It was me, sitting in front of the screen. Then the computer went to black and shut off. As much as I tried, the computer wouldn't turn on again. I still can't get it to turn on. Every night I see those images, I hear those words, give up before he tears you apart. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I look at the computer and the skull is there on the screen. I can feel something in my house now. It's present. My mother and father can't feel it. Their innocence hasn't been taken from them. Mine has. But this is why I'm writing this. My dreams have turned into nightmares. My sweet memories into traumatizing ones. Nothing is left of me anymore, and I'm going to take Scar's advice. These are my last words that I feel compelled to ask you. What are you going to do? What do you have to live for? And that, my little pretties, was the Lion King Sega Genesis game. A uh, Lion King Lost Gaming Creepypasta written by Shadow Vixen. Um, my final thoughts on the story? I have some good things to say about this story. And this actually reminds me of the time when I narrated this back in 2019. This was actually a really good Lion King, was a good Lion King creepypasta at the time. Like, I mean, there was some negatives, yes, that when I did the review, which I don't remember. But I do have, you know, some negative things, you know, to say about this story. For one... Uh, the grammar is pretty good in this story, along with the sentence structuring, and the startup of the storyline seemed pretty interesting and all that. I mean, it's not really cliched or anything like that. I mean, the startup of the first paragraph and all that seemed to be neat. I mean, I actually have heard of this game and I did play it as a kid. It has been, like, years, though, since I last played it, so, yeah. There's definitely that. It's been years since I last um, played this game. I think I played it when I was in elementary school. Like, oh my goodness, it's been that long. 
But I also have some things that I did not really care for this story, which I am going to be explaining. Dane. Uh, sorry about that if you're hearing the knocking. Um, yeah, that's my mom. Just saying. Okay, um, for one thing I could definitely say that I did not like about this story was that it was cliched. Like, I mean, there were cliches in the story such as, well, realistic blood. Like, I mean, there was, like, realistic blood on this, you know, computer screen partway through the story. I'm like, oh my god. Like, seriously? I mean, the realistic blood thing, I mean, that's cliched when it comes to the story. Like, the real blood was so realistic the person could touch it on the screen. Like, come on. Like, why did the person have to add that? Like... That is cliched when it comes to, well, well, gaming pasta. And, you know, what's really kind of cliched bit, too, is that sitting right there and, you know, seeing, um, well, Mufasa, well, saying stuff like a glowing green eyes. And, I mean, I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. Like, this story is cliched with the hyperlistic blood. And, I mean, like... That's really messed up when it comes to that. But yet again, it just didn't, um, really didn't work that great. I mean, another thing I could definitely say about this story was the quotes from Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, that's not really how you should really, um, how you should really, well, work in this sense. I mean, this story was definitely, um, something. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Like, I mean, there was cliches in the story, like hyperlistic blood and all. I mean, it just didn't really work out that great. I mean, it just didn't make the story really good. I mean, the character ever dying at the end and the game knowing the person's name. I mean, it doesn't really work. Like, mentioning somebody's protagonist's name in a story, like, from a computer screen, I'm like, how would that be possible? Like, that's no reason why that should be there. That's one cliche I did notice, as well as, you know, Simba losing a body part every time he jumped. I know it's kind of really messed up and cliche, too. Especially when it comes to Simba, you know, dragging himself to have, like, blood, you know, forming as he pulls and you know, drags himself. I mean, why? Like, come on. That doesn't really make the story really scary. That just, it just doesn't work with this story. And I'm being 100% honest. Like, <sighs> another part I would really have to say is like, why would Simba and Mufasa, you know, be ripping, you know, each other, well, apart? Like, seriously, why would that be the case? And why would there also be, you know, Mufasa, you know, saying the you know that he let goes of everything or something like that like why i mean there's absolutely no reasons to be you know you know to see any of this like why that's the case i mean yes i'm gonna not gonna be complete i'm not i'm not gonna be be you know mad or anything but the one part that really kind of almost enraged me is the part where it says, a skull flaming on the screen. A skull. Why? Ugh. Why does that even have to be in the story? Like, it doesn't didn't really work. I mean, that's kind of cliched. And even saying, oh, Satan will tear you apart. Like, oh my goodness. Is this game even possessed or something? Oh, uh, that doesn't... I mean, there's no reason why that should be there. There's no reason for any of that demon cliche BS in it. Like, I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why I didn't like this story, as well as some of the cliches that were added into it. But I'm going to give it benefit of the doubt. It's an older pasta, but it's not a good story. I mean, it's not terrible, but I, this story was not my cup of tea. Like, I mean, it's a gaming pasta, yes. I mean, I've found, you know, a couple of other gaming pastas that weren't really that great. Like, one of them being Sonic.exe. Like, I mean, I did not really like the fact that, you know, that there were cliches in there and everything like that. I mean, uh, Like, the only, the main problems with this story is that it's cliched. That's actually one of the reasons why this story really needs some work. 
But one thing I'm definitely going to sit here and say is this. This story, it does need a lot of work. I mean, it... Like, I mean, this is an older story. So I guess I could kind of really excuse that. I mean, the game being pasta... You know, the game itself just went... That's when the pasta started to go downhill with unnecessary cliches and all that. I mean, the startup was good, but it fell flat when it got to, well, the cliched gaming part. I mean, to the offer, if your story... If you think your story is fine, that's perfectly fine. Like, if you're okay with how your story is, that's completely fine. It's literally your cho your choice on what you like about this story. Like I'm going to say, this is simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to own opinions regards to these um, Cree pastas or gaming pastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rate of this story would have to be a 3 out of 10. I'm giving it a free because the grammar was good as well as the sentence structuring, the paragraph structuring. The start up of the story, like the beginning of it, was pretty good. But when it got to, you know, freaky things happening in the game halfway through, I mean, unnecessary cliches that were thrown in there. Uh, the quotes from Edgar Allan Poe was in it, which it didn't really make sense. And it wasn't really that, you know, successful to help in the story. The mention of Satan and all that. I mean, the cliches just kind of, that's what brought the story down. Other than that, the story was alright. It could be, could have been better though. So anyways, with that being said and with that being the case, what did you guys think about this um, game in pasta? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done person to help make this game in pasta a lot better. Feel free to leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, uh, please roll the outro because I'm out.